Welcome back to theCUBE, everyone. The leader in live tech coverage coming to you live from Las Vegas. It's HPE Discover 2023, day one of theCUBE's coverage, Lisa Martin and Dave Vellante. We had a great morning, Dave, with Antonio Neri's keynote. We knew we were going to hear a lot about AI. We're going to be talking with one of our alumni next from Intel. We're going to be talking about how customers can make AI deployments successful. It's a big challenge. Yeah, when AI is in the news, Intel's in the news, you guys are building factories all over the world. And, uh, it's great to see the public-private partnership kicking in, it's great for the country, so uh, welcome to theCUBE, it's great to see you. It is, and Greg Ernst is here, Corporate Vice President, Intel Sales and Marketing, and GM, America Sales Intel. Greg, welcome back, great to have you. My pleasure, thank you. So talk a little bit about HPE and Intel have been partners for quite a long time. Since we're here at HPE event, give us a little bit of context, give the audience yeah. some really kind of, of the, the status of the partnership. Yeah, no, that's great. At Intel and HPE, we've been working 30 years together. Um, they're one of our absolute leading customers, partners, go to market. We have a 360 degree relationship. Uh, we rely on them heavily to really take our great semiconductor products and put system solutions uh, around it to make the technology ac accessible. So whether it's government agencies, cloud companies, telcos, um, enterprises, it's partners like HPE that Intel really needs that, that extracts the value of that, that compute power and brings it. Uh, and I've had a great relationship with HPE. A few years of my career, actually four years, I led our HPE account team. Ah, so okay. I, I got to lead the team when, when HP split into HPE and H, HPI. Talk, so AI, hot topic, yeah. the hottest topic, one of the hottest topics on the planet. Everyone's talking about generative AI and all these great sorts of things. What are some of the challenges that, that you're seeing that companies have? Because we hear leaders say, and Antonio said something similar this morning, like if you're not already invested in AI or working with it, you're already behind. What are some of the challenges customers are coming to Intel saying, help us resolve yeah. this so we can actually yeah. become leading edge here? I think most, um, well in the generative AI space, I think it, it's emerging. So if companies don't have a plan, don't have a strategy, they're, they're actually, I would say, more in the norm. Um, but, from, um, but clearly that, that's, that's where the world's going. It's, this is a dynamic thing. I, Antonio uh, made bold claims today about it being the, the biggest thing in a generation, and I could see that. Uh, but most companies I talk to, they're in this phase now of understanding what data they have, putting it in a searchable format, organizing the data. Uh, they're starting now working through what algorithms and what use cases. They're hiring, that's, and that's a big thing right now is the, the skills and the labor. Uh, and in, Intel's happy to advise on all those. Uh, one area that obviously what we're strongest with is then the actual compute infrastructure, um, which can be complex, it can be a large investment, and at a time right now where there's still some economic uncertainty for enterprises, making that, that capital outlay, and whether it's on-prem cloud, whether they build their own, there's a, there's a lot of big decisions that they have to make. And you guys have been, I mean I can't remember wrong, but you've been shipping AI technologies for a long time. I don't oh, know yeah. what the history of it is. It's, it's, it's like AI is everywhere, but maybe you can help our audience just sort of understand Intel's strategy with respect to AI. Yeah. Well, for us, we've got, uh, and right now generative AI has got all the buzz, yeah. right? Um, but for us, it's, to your, to your point, it's, AI has been integrated into software for, for years now. Um, we've got, a, Intel's got a big, big play around a vi video image AI. Um, we have a whole software suite of tools that we call, that's OpenVINO, open source base. Uh, it allows companies to train their video use cases. It's great for edge, right? Tell, uh, retail, manufacturing, hospitality, they have it deployed. Uh, so, we, so there's that class, and then there's another class that's emerging, but, but, but here too, which is AI use cases on, on the PC. So we, early, like during COVID, we spent a lot of time on, on, on video conferencing and the editing out of the background, being able to track the pupil, the eyes, even if you look, um, all, all that's AI driven. And then, then there's this newer space 
around generative AI, that, that's exploded and the large language modeling and, and that's what everyone's talking about these days. Which is really, that's where the GPU comes in, right? And again, but you're shipping GPUs, right? Yeah. I mean, that's something that you've been yeah, we've, for a while. We've got a GPU class called GPU Max, uh, Argonne National Labs actually deployed an exascale cluster with us, um, funded in partnership with Department of Energy. That, that uses uh, six GPUs per cluster. And then uh, one thing that we've brought in now is really taking that same compute technology, which it's matrix math, is um, that, that's what's great for Excels on AI is matrix math. And we've actually onboarded accelerators built into just our high volume Xeons. And customers are seeing 10X improvement versus the previous gen on PyTorch, TensorFlow, some of these models. So, for us, that's one thing that we see. It's GPUs got a lot of buzz, but for us, we, we just see there's a, a lot of benefit of taking the same accelerators, putting it in the high purpose CPUs. That way customers can offload some of those AI compute tasks to the dedicated advanced matrix extensions while still using the CPU to run, run everything else. And is there a sustainability angle there? Because we'd mentioned AI yeah. is super hot, so is Sustainable IT. How oh, is yeah. Intel and HPE helping customers yeah. achieve that? Because every customer has, these days, has a requirement to you know, be net zero or carbon neutral by a certain year. Right. Yeah, they're almost opposing, right? You got this insatiable demand for compute, but at the same time, we have an incredible responsibility to, to reduce our carbon footprint. So there, you have these two counterbalances, uh, and that's where Intel's one of the few CPU companies on Earth that we design, the, we design the products and we manufacture. And so for us, the, the first big thing that we want to do is environmentally friendly in all the markets where we manufacture. And we're around the world, we continue to expand there. 93% uh, of our products now are actually built using reusable energy. So 93%. Uh, we've actually achieved a positive water reuse. So between the water that we recycle plus the reclamation projects, we actually return more water to the Earth's surface than we take out. Um, and so for us, that's a big part. But then as we said, we design the products as well. For power optimizations, that's one of the reasons why we, we, we believe these integrated accelerators are key because that'll help, again, reduce the the compute power required to run these tasks. So for us, it's the build the products, which is scope one, and then also help our customers run them, which is scope two and scope three. Yeah. So the world used to be so simple, right? You had chips for PCs, you had chips for yeah. enterprise, and they would run on SAP and some Microsoft workloads, a little bit of Oracle database. Okay, great, yeah. done. That has changed, right? Yeah. So how has that affected how you go to market? Well, for us, I mean, I love it. So I'm, I'm an electrical engineer by trade. And uh, for, for 20 years of my career, no one really was concerned about compute or wanted to know all the details underneath. So for me, this is, it's fun. All of a sudden now, computing, GPUs, CPUs, it's, it's all the rage. Um, and more and more, we, we get to like spin our propellers and get deep. So for us, it's great now. Going to market though, it, what's been exciting is just and even over the last eight months, just the explosion of the number of companies in this space, from the software vendors to AIs, the service companies, Antonio announced right there in the lar large language modeling, public cloud. Um, so just the new partnerships is exciting. But I think for enterprises, it could be overwhelming yeah. of where to make, again, where to make the bets. Um, and and that, that's where I'm spending a lot of my time personally is help digesting all this, and that's the role y'all play. Well, you think about it, we, we, everybody wanted to get remote work right. Yeah. Nobody did. <laughs> right, that yeah. And then everybody wanted to get digital right, and then just as they thought they had their hands around that, you get these weird yeah. macro trends going on, and now it's like everybody's trying to get AI right. Yeah. There's a lot of uncertainty out there. What, what do you, what do you, how do you see the future of this playing out? I mean, you've seen waves before. I think the next, um, I think this is where, honestly, a lot of these AI as a service companies can really help because what they'll do is um, they'll help companies advise and, and, and companies, I, I, if I were them, I would try multiple things don't um, before going in big, deep 
on, on one approach. So I actually see all these companies exploding as a great thing. Um, because especially, again, as we said earlier, with we still have some uncertain times yeah. in the markets, right? And so, and, and future earnings, some companies are still uneasy what their future earnings look like. So making, uh, staging some of these investments, I think is, is the right approach. And then learning from the, the great innovation. Um, so any, that's, that's the approach I, I recommend. In the last few years, how have your customer conversations evolved? Where customers are talking about chips, but also AI, sustainability, yeah. needing to really be able to make a big impact, to not just survive the last couple of years, but thrive yeah. and be competitive. How have you seen customer conversations change between levels and priorities yeah. and boards? I'd say, uh, and we were talking earlier, responding to COVID was one building hybrid cloud strategies kind of before that. To me, the probably top thing now that's emerged, I mean, we talked about AI, but it's, it's to me it's the sustainability and the commitments that a lot of companies have around sustainability. Um, and, and they recognize that their compute footprint's a big part of it. And so that's, uh, and that's exciting for me, because Intel, our, I mean, our, one of our great founders, Gordon Moore, most people, a lot of people don't realize, he was an environmentalist first, right? And so, and charity after he was done working was uh, uh, regenerating natural spaces and protecting natural spaces. So it's, it's in our DNA. Yeah. DNA. Um, and frankly, I feel like it was underappreciated uh, by the world of just, there, there's an there's a environmental friendly way to, to build semiconductor companies. Uh, in manufacturing, and, and it takes purpose, it does take investment, and it's got to be part of the DNA. So uh, for me, it's been great. Uh, we, we publish every year, too, our, our, our sustainability report. It's got targets, it's got progress, we hold ourselves accountable. It's just like our annual report. And, uh, and are your customers coming to you saying, hey, Intel, show us this, because if we want to come to you with an RFP, we have a requirement within our own organization to be net zero by X year, yeah. and we need help with our compute power from partners like Intel to achieve it. Yeah, I think reusable energy, reducing the carbon footprint or eliminating greenhouse gas are the two big ones. The thing um, that as, a, as an industry, we still have work to do, which is really creating a, a repeatable way to measure this. And, and what, what is the correct way to measure it? And it's one of the things that Intel being standards driven company for years, um, to me, I, we've got a big responsibility of help build those standards so that companies have a repeatable measure way to do it. And when they make these claims, they know what they're signing up for and then they, frankly, they can hold themselves accountable. The accountability is key. Yeah, yeah. And, and I think that all of them, it's just, it's, they want to, they want to feel that too, right? Yeah. It's not just yeah. that other people are going to hold them accountable, it's like they want to make commitments and meet them, right? Yep. So speaking of Intel founders, I wrote a piece, it was during COVID, early part of COVID, a, a breaking analysis. Pat Gelsinger has to channel his best Andy Grove to recreate Intel. So he's been at it, no doubt. How has Pat's presence at Intel sort of yeah. affected the culture, you know, back to its roots? Uh, he's an incredibly focused individual. Yeah. We see him, you know, he's out there, he's talking to governments, he's, he's talking to the audience, he's talking to leaders. How, how have, has, has the change you know, noticeable? I'm sure it is, but what, have, what, what yeah. can you tell us about the, what's going on Well, inside? Pat's a force of nature. Yeah, no doubt. Uh, he's my boss's boss. He, uh, every morning he's up at 3.55 a.m. Wow. Responds to emails for five minutes and then goes and works out. So I always wake up to five minutes of, <laughs> of emails. Um, but uh, I love working for Pat, and uh, and I and I and our customers love it too. We we've been on a journey really to bring back our technology, innovation, excellence uh, since Pat Pat's joined. We we talk a lot at our company. It was something called five nodes in four years, mm -hmm. which means five manufacturing, semiconductor manufacturing transitions in the next four years. Good news is two of them are already done. So since Pat came, we said five and four years, two are done, the last three are, are, are in track. And, and for us, that's, uh, that's really like our mega OKR that keeps us on track to Moore's Law. Um, so that, that has been a focus. And then the other big thing that we were talking about 
when I walked up here is Pat's brought just an incredible accountability for us to, to create that global, sustainable, resilient supply chain for semiconductors. Um, we're trying to move half the world's semiconductors to the Western Hemisphere, so Europe and, and the Americas. Uh, today, it's 80% is done in Taiwan. Uh, and just given all the geopolitical tensions, that could be risky. And so we, Pat's brought that, and then the other thing Pat's brought is as part of that, we're willing to open our factories up for any semiconductor company and be their foundry partner. And traditionally, that wasn't the case. Uh, but with Pat's leadership, is like, hey, not only should we build the factories, we need to open it up for the rest of the ecosystem to, to build. And so for me, those, those are the big three things, right? Five nodes in four years, build out of the semiconductors, uh, supply chain, and then becoming a foundry company in a big way. And as well, if, correct me if I'm wrong, but your designers also have choice in, in terms of where things are manufactured, is that correct? Is as that far correct? as which site? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, which site, and even, aren't you even tapping some other foundries, or is that not, am I mistaken on that? Is it well, all, we had, all um, no, is it all? yeah, we, We've announced some acquisitions that we're still working through um, all the regulatory authorities to, to close, but, but it, that would bring some additional IP uh, purpose built for things like um, uh, public sector, things like automotive, exactly. Yeah, so, like I said at the top, it's great for the country. It's great for, I think, the balance, uh, you know, geopolitical balance, and yeah. you know, we need a strong intel. Um, and, and, it's a challenging business, expensive business, right? And so, you know, the other thing Pat's done is he's done a good job convincing, you know, different governments to help out, you know, and put up some dough, so. The momentum yeah. sounds great. It sounds like there's a really good mix of some of the original Intel DNA that you talked about, along with cultural shift, which is what so many storied institutions aim to achieve. Greg, we yeah. thank you so much for stopping by and That's sharing awesome. with us what's new with Intel, your partnership with HPE, and some of the things, industry trends, and customer opportunities that excite you most. You have to come back. Well, thank you. Thanks for everything the two of you do. Thank you, appreciate Our it. Our pleasure. All right, we appreciate it. For our guests and for Dave Vellante, I'm Lisa Martin. You're watching theCUBE, the leader in live tech coverage, and up next, two CUBE alumni from VMware and HPE join us to talk about HPE GreenLake with VMware, partnerships, opportunities, and more. Stick around, we'll see you in a minute.